Hey everyone, this is Ben from Questing Beast. I thought I'd make a quick video responding to a really interesting video that I saw today by Bill Allen. I'll put the original video in the links below if you want to watch it yourself. But the point of the video um, that Bill Allen was trying to make was really interesting. And it's something that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about on YouTube when it comes to role playing games in D&D. And that is, his point was that there is a sense if you watch a lot of D, D videos especially advice videos that you can become a great game master or a great player or a great whatever by following you know this or that tip or trick and you're going to be great at DD as a result and this attitude is especially common among people who haven't played D, &D. maybe they've just heard about it and they're getting into it or people who haven't played very much of it maybe they're new players and they feel inadequate and they're trying to really improve. So they're binging videos by maybe Matt Colville or WASD20 or Dawn Forge Cast or any of the other really great channels out there. I'm not knocking these channels at all because I watch them all the time too. But there's a real temptation to feel that um, these bits of advice, these tips and tricks are what it takes to make you great at this game. And Bill Allen's point was that that's not really the case. And I think I mostly agree with him. Um, Bill's point was that to run a game is a difficult thing. The basics of it aren't that difficult, but to become really good at it requires time, probably more than anything else, time and effort. It requires a fairly large multidisciplinary set of skills. You're good at acting, good at improvisation, good at logical extrapolation of events good at thinking up good twists and turns, good at thinking up good obstacles to throw in front of players, um, not being stumped when players do something very strange that you weren't expecting. All of these things take a long time to develop. I've only been playing D&D &D for maybe four or five years, and I'm just beginning. Um, I know that I have a lot of gaps in my skills that I'm trying to fill. And I'm very far behind people like Bill, who've been playing for a long time, or to take an extreme case, people like Tim Kask, um, who has been playing D&D since before it was released. He was a play tester on original D&D. And he's still around, he's still playing. So these people who have these massive amounts of experience um, find running the game to be pretty much intuitive. They don't have to think about it anymore because they've internalized all of these GM tips into themselves. Now, the only thing that I would push back against with what Bill said is that long years of experience aren't the only thing. There are actually techniques and tricks and um, things to keep in mind that can dramatically improve your game. I know that was true for me. Um, I heard things in the old school community and on YouTube, things that I had never thought of, would not have thought of on my own. And when I actually implemented them into my game, I saw distinct improvements very quickly. So that wasn't me, that wasn't just time, that was the knowledge and experience of other people directly helping me. But the key here is, when you're watching all of these videos, don't watch them in isolation. You have to be playing a lot. And when you find a good piece of advice, what you should do is implement that into your game. Actually test it. Play it out, see if it works for you. Because not every piece of advice works for every group. And then after the session is over, discuss maybe among your players or even just think to yourself, did that actually improve my game? Was it easier than last time? Did it make the game more fun? If so, keep it. If not, change it or throw it out. Same thing with bad habits you might have. If for some reason the session didn't work out very well, you need to be very deliberate and conscious about thinking what didn't work. Asking your players is a great way to do this, actually. Asking them, what would you improve? What would you like to see more of? What would you like to see less of? So that you can get that direct feedback and then actually make changes in how you run games. Because I know from my own experience, I've definitely played games with game masters who clearly have been playing for a very long time, 30, 40 years or whatever. And despite the fact that they were obviously very relaxed and comfortable, the game was not fun. It wasn't fun at all. It was very dry. They didn't have much of an imagination. They couldn't improv. The game was just stale and boring. And it's clear that their long experience hadn't helped them because they hadn't actually internalized pieces of advice and feedback into their games, um, thought about it, and allowed it to change their behavior. So that's the main point that I want to make in this video, is that you need experience. You need to be playing the game a lot if you're going to improve. And all of these great pieces of advice that you're going to hear on my channel or anywhere else, try them. 
implement them, see if they work, and if they do, keep them, and if they don't, throw them out. You have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to break the mold and say, what I'm doing is not working, and make that change. That's it. That's it. That's it for this video. That's all I wanted to say, really. And I really think you should check out Bill Allen's channel because that was a really great video and it really sparked something that I hadn't thought of in a long time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys later.